This March Madness Picks edition of Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now offering a Bet the Underdog special. Bettors will receive a $25 free bet for every $50 winning wager on dogs greater than plus 300. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also provided by Stable Duel. Stable Duel is a horse racing DFS app where you can play free and paid games for real cash prizes. You can win as much as $25,000 with one entry. Head over to StableDuel.com to get started today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. Head over to PropSwap.com or download the PropSwap app today. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app for your chance to win $3,000 in the DGEN dance. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green with my partner in picks, right? Real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer dog. Ca-ca! Ca-ca! <laughs> Come on. Is that Let's the- go Jersey. I don't know. Is that the sound of peacock makes? I don't give a shit. That's the sound a, what was the money line? Sean, that's the sound Plus a 450. Fi- oh, I wasn't even talking about Richmond. I'm talking about the St. Peter's Peacocks, 10 oh, to yes. one on the money Insane. line. Jersey's finest. Let's go. Yes. I got my orange hokey shirt on today on the eve of battle. Bring the, on our guests. The dogs were barking. Joining us to talk college basketball. As always, Colby Dan, AKA the Dan to base. What's up, Colby? <laughs> I mean, look, I'm just uh, the New Mexico state play. I got the gun shooting like that sweet mascot. <laughs> I was riding that mustache. Sean. <laughs> yes, exactly. Chat to the live YouTube chat. Go Bearcats. Pointing out that uh, Ali Kerr, uh, son of uh, Cameron, who uh, his eighth month old picked a bracket and all, and he had, uh, he had Kentucky going down in round one. So congratulations to him joining us uh, from the NBA Gambling Podcast, the Propcast, Scott Reichel. What's up, Scott? Yeah, doing pretty good. How's it going with you guys? Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the program. We're gonna we're gonna recap, uh, do a little touting uh, for our picks, and then get into. Uh, what we like Saturday, because we're already seeing lines pop up over at winbet.com. Of course, head over to winbet.com. Bet big, win bigger. Download that win betting app. Bet uh, $10, and you get uh, $200 in credits. So easy to win. They have uh, a number of, I mean, the live betting alone. Of course, the uh, bet the underdog special. They could be in trouble because dogs greater than plus 300 Richmond. Course, yes. Kramer and I gave out Richmond money line as our big dog offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. must be 21 or older and present state where play through one bet is available. If you're someone, you know, has a gaming problem call 1-800-522-4700 Colby hit his uh, dog. This is a triple dog salute Richmond uh, Kramer and I both on and then Colby had New Mexico state. Colby hit on his uh, lock of Memphis minus two and a half and Tennessee minus 16 and a half. Uh, I'm one and one with my locks, Providence and Yukon, Akron outstanding Kramer one and one as well. Providence and, and Marquette just don't, don't complete, even bring the Marquette thing up complete, complete. Well, no a, show. <laughs> yeah. You, you have to give a little to get a little. Yeah. And you know, the spiders treated us well. So. Oh my God. And then uh, just watch a heartbreaking loss by San Diego state. Colby, what is it about the Mountain West? Very disappointing start to their tournament. This was a huge choke job. I you can't make an excuse San Diego for this. State uh, crate. Yeah, you can't make an excuse for the Colorado State game. But I'll say the Both other had massive yes. leads. Colorado State was a little less surprising because Colorado State was shooting lights out as someone who is down on all the first half unders. But they should have been up like twenty at halftime. They were yeah. only up seven, yeah. and we we made a note of that uh, right right when it went to half. And then you look at the other ones. I thought Boise State just got a terrible draw with Memphis because Memphis was like a preseason top 10 team. Uh, and then uh, the other one, uh, I thought Wyoming got a terrible draw by having to play uh, you know, in Dayton against Indiana, where it was basically a road game. Yeah, and we will be, we will be reacting to some of these games live. Of course, uh, first half unders hanging around 
not off to an amazing start, but there's plenty of uh, plenty of games left. Kramer, what is the official first half over under tracker at? Seven. Well, so I know some of the DGens won uh, on the first game of the day. It could have been a loss. It could have been a push. It could have been a win. We pushed on the sheet uh, with that push, seven, eight, and one overall. So, so a little, a little below where we'd want, like to be as an official trend, but. When you get something like the Richmond money line or the New Mexico State money line, couple a uh, couple locks really really help carry but the day. We watched the end of the Richmond game right near a very sad Iowa fan, and <laughs> and, and it, it was almost like he was expecting it. Like like well, some, he should because some sort of weird yeah. prisoner just waiting to take it. it, it I, I couldn't believe it. They never get to the Sweet Sixteen. They always struggle in the first two rounds. So he should be expecting it, despite winning the big 10 championship, Scott. Now we were hanging out. I know you hit your, uh, big parlay of the day early on. You needed Michigan. You didn't hedge at all. Had to sweat that out a little bit uh, and got the win. What else did you tie to it? Well, I was going to say it would have been kind of offensive if I come on this show today and I don't let it ride. Yeah. So I chose exactly. to let it ride. I know the audience I'm with here, but yeah, I ended up having Michigan. It didn't look good early. I'll tell you that much because no. they're down 15, but they eventually started guarding the three-point line. Dickinson did whatever he wanted. I actually parlayed it. Kind of a true D-Gen story here. <laughs> I placed a two-pick parlay at the airport before I took off on my plane. So I ended up having the Raptors minus four and a half against the Lakers back in New York. And then I put that with Michigan on the money line. It got there. And, yeah, can't complain. Good he's, way to start the day. He's taking parlays across state lines, Sean. <laughs> no, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> We will alert the FBI. Scott <laughs> Reichel is on the list. Well, I, think the, I think the funniest part, though, is that I couldn't even hit the cash out option because <laughs> I'm, with, I'm outside yes. of parameters. So I was just ready to go and it worked itself out. <laughs> you had to let it run. But, yeah. but overall, this first day, I, I feel like the, uh, it started out slow with the exception of that Richmond Iowa game. A lot of blowouts. And then just recently, just awesome oh, God, games, got, awesome game, awesome game. It started, game. Yeah. started getting hot, get some overtime. Kramer. Now, uh, of course we gave out uh, the uh, Colgate, Yale, Chattanooga money line round Robin. And uh, the guy who we're running the DJ dance with the, the programmer, he put up 250 of his own dollars. He said, throw it on whatever you guys want. So I entered it in as a, uh, cause we already gave that one out. I entered it in as a money line round Robin. So anything of that round Robin that hits gets added to the $3,000 prize wow. pool. He'd probably appreciate software engineer. But that's <laughs> right now, uh, taking a look at, uh, we have a tie for first place. Dirty Dan and RDMC 3122, both with 51,000 oh shares. <laughs> I'm guessing one of them just, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how you got up to 51,000, probably just putting all 10,000 on Sean, something like Richmond Moneyline. Letting it ride. That's how he got there. Exactly. It's like a blackjack tourney. You got to go heavy. That, you don't win these things. I assume there's a lot of people in because lo a lot of DJs like to dance. Yes. Uh, everyone saw Colby yesterday doing. I'm his, still dancing, doing man. His and salsa, I'm still doing dancing his salsa. here in the land down under. I'm in a very respectable 39th, hanging around. Jason Swoboda, shout out him, friend of the program. He's in third place. I think you can still. Uh, I don't know if it's locked or not, but if you're if you're hearing this now, you may still be able to get in. Uh, download the app. Just hit the contest tab, and you're in. I mean, that's St. Peter's thing, though. Uh, I'm just reading this right now that the the four assistant coaches for Kentucky make more than the head coach of St. Peter's. Wow. Like, uh, by a large amount, too. I guess you can't <laughs> buy a championship. Yeah. He's trying. I mean, what, a, what an upset. What a great win for the Peacocks. Love it. Love it. Yes. Uh, and any other thoughts on, on the early action before we start getting to next day's picks? What was I, I Any big say, takeaways, yeah. Scott? I do want to just point on one thing for the Kentucky game. Calipari went on air after Kentucky lost to Tennessee in the SEC tournament saying how they didn't do shoot-around for some reason and how he decided <laughs> to change it up a little bit and yeah. how they were going to shoot better from three the second time or in the actual NCAA tournament. They went four for 15. So I guess technically they went better, They were, but it wasn't exactly uh, good and they ended up losing. They attempted 35 free throws. They made 23 of them. But anytime you outshoot your opponent from the foul line by 14 attempts, 
you got to win that game. Yeah. Not, not to mention the talent disparity, of course. No, it's insane. How is, how is uh, everyone's bracket doing? I mean, again, I had Kentucky uh, winning. And but I, I won with my final. Yes, Colby, you I can was just reluctant. rip up your bracket. Uh, right? No, no, I think I'm alive with Kentucky losing. I think yeah. a lot of people probably had Kentucky in the final four as well. I'm just going to point this out as an optimist. Kentucky is the two seed on the Hokies side of the bracket. Okay. Well, I didn't. I, I we had, got to plow out in front of us. I all had, right? I had, Let's go. <laughs> I have UCLA to win it all. I had UCLA beating uh, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. So I, I'm fine with it because people probably had Kentucky going, going farther. And uh, something like that is just truly, but you, truly why they call it March Madness. I mean, look, I, I lost on Iowa. and I, But I mean, I think that side of the bracket is going to be chaotic. So I, I, I'm, I'm not panicking yet because I don't think Auburn... And I think there's a decent shot Kansas doesn't come out. Well, I don't know because Creighton lost Cockbrenner. You, uh, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. To, it's well, tough Creighton, to perform Creighton after a, losing a, a Cockbrenner. A bunch of injuries. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, my 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 rapid fire takeaways are the Mountain West sucks. The Big Ten probably still sucks. Big East. Providence Hello. is a team filled with dogs. Dog. The, the guard on Richmond. Jacob Gilliard. Dog. Oh, that guy is fun. The yeah. guard on uh, New Mexico State or forward? Yes, t- uh, t- Timmy Allen. Well, right. Dog. Yeah. And we're going to get into it, but remember, uh, teams who win outright as dogs of seven points or more, you want to fade them the next week, or sorry, the next game, yeah. if they're getting uh, six points or more, correct? That, that's a, a absolutely that's the trend, correct. right? Betting commandment. And we do we have that scenario? We do not. Okay. Well, we'll get to these lines in just a second. Make sure we get to shout out manscape.com. Oh man. Clean out your closets for screen spring cleaning. What about cleaning out your, uh, you know, below the belt clean up with manscape.com. You got the lawnmower 4.0 tons of power, the crop preserver, a ball deodorant crop reviver toner. We, uh, we have been hanging out with uh, Dick Olson. There hasn't been a Dick Olson sighting. I would imagine a guy like Dick enjoys crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Who wouldn't want that? Manscaped.com and <laughs> the refined cologne signature scent. That's what you need. If all that doesn't make you smell uh, better down there, the uh, refined cologne certainly will do that. Manscaped.com, promo code SGP, 20% off and free shipping. Are you kidding me? All right, let's get to it. Saturday games. Kramer, you want to read off the lines? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, no, let's let's quick hit on the two Friday games we didn't pick. Oh, you're right. Yes. Yeah, uh, we have at 1.15 p.m. on Friday, Notre Dame, the advancer of the play-in game, the 11 seed taking on Alabama. Alabama laying only four, minus 180, plus 160 for the Fighting Irish. 72 is the first half total. 152 is the full game total. You, you bet your ass I'm taking the Irish on St. Patrick's Day, Sean. Well, again, St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow. Uh, this, today is St. Patrick's Day, but you're picking the, the <laughs> Irish on St. Patrick's Day. I'll allow that. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I said. Think you Thanks, that. They, what <laughs> do you mean? I'm, I'm not going to fade the Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Sean. I, okay, I get it. I get where your head's Thanks at. Thanks for recapping my words, though. I'm going... Uh, I'm with you. I'm going Notre Dame plus four. I had the winner of Notre Dame Rutgers moving on. I thought it was going to be Rutgers. It's not. I still, I, I still think they're going to be a live dog against this Alabama team. I just can't trust Alabama at all. And especially with this Notre Dame team getting four points. Uh, I, and Notre Dame looked better than I thought. Colby, where are you at with this game? Well, I think we have to now that we know Indiana lost because one of these uh, uh-huh. play-in games always statistically, yeah. I think only what once in 10 years of data has Thou shall respect the play in game only once since 2011 did a play in team not make the round of 32 so exactly i'm your leprechaun sean <laughs> oh my oh, god please was yes. that, what <laughs> accent was that that was like a mix of arnold with the uh, picked up d that was not an Irish accent at all. That's Colby. my Irish accent, man. I've been in Vegas drinking for 12 hours. Right? That's what you get. That's Sean Connery, right? Col- Colby is my... I'm your leprechaun, Sean. <laughs> yeah, there. <laughs> uh, Colby is my dad, 420. What is, what is Colby looking at so furiously? Uh, uh, we have the UCLA we do Akron have game UCLA, on. You know. UCLA, Akron, of course, one of my locks. Akron plus 13 and a half. 
actually was able to get a plus 14. Scott, we'll kick it to you. What do you got here in this game? Notre Dame plus four, Alabama. I'm also going to take Notre Dame. I'm your leprechaun. Yes. <laughs> That's the only reason why I'm taking it. Just for, <laughs> just for the Sean Connery impression. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to take Notre Dame here because Alabama is entering the tournament on a three-game losing streak. I'm a pretty big believer that you should be entering the tournament with your best foot forward, so to speak. And Bama's been a mess pretty much all season long in terms of consistency. Now, Notre Dame barely beat Rutgers. It is true. But... They are a 75-plus percent free-throw shooting team. Yes, love that. And they only shot 56.3% in the actual play-in. So they had a ridiculously bad free-throw shooting game compared to the normal standards. I think if this game's going to be close, which it should be, I want a team that should be able to capitalize late. So I like Notre Dame. But really, I don't know how I'm supposed to lay four with Alabama when I don't even no. trust this team to win games. Size, experience, they shoot the three ball well, they shoot free throws well, they take care of the ball, they're Better coach. Like, why? Wrong yeah. team favored. Let's go. There's gold under the rainbow. And, and by the way, <laughs> low key, maybe the ACC is about to come out and shock some people. Oh, wow. All season. Hey, North talk, Carolina looking talk, like. Talking a lot of shit. That's true. Right. That is true. Uh, Next game we got. Uh, four, yep. In the afternoon. Four, the, this is the, one of the third block games. 16 seed Wright State. That taking down the Mr. Kiss himself. Hope you're happy, Colby. Uh, taking on the I one was seed. on right state, buddy. I know, but you, you, <laughs> you identified Ric Flair and then you faded him. That's not cool. Arizona laying 20 and a half, minus 5,000 for Arizona, right state plus 15. Oh, man. You, you saw that guy who had that uh, ticket prop swap uh, tweeted it out <laughs> of the guy who had the Gonzaga 67,000 to win 700. Obviously, a, a bit of a sweat in the first half. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Gonzaga pulled away, although they didn't somehow didn't get the cover, but that's just insane to kind of lay that yeah. uh, massive amount on the money line. I'm not laying 5,000. 74 is the first half total. 156 and a half is the full game total. Uh, I've been, you know, I haven't been great with the, uh, the chalk plays here. I think it's been wise to just take the points, but Arizona is the best team, right? Like they're like, they see what's happened now. Don't, don't we always have to react? And now Arizona sees this, the coach can say, Hey, don't be like those guys. Come out and smash this team. Both uh, shoot a decent uh, field goal percentage, although Wright State 76.9 compared to Arizona 73.8. Scott, what's your what's your lean on this? Massive spread, but what are you what are you doing here? I'm actually looking at the total on this one. I like okay. the I like the over. I know that's a pretty high total, but Wright State ranks 85th in pace. We know Arizona definitely loves to push the pace as well as they love to go up tempo as they should. They rank eighth in in tempo also number five in offensive efficiency. But Wright State basically let Bryant do whatever it wanted offensively. They just were able to score more. So if you're looking at a situation where Arizona could potentially score 100 in here, would you really be surprised if they did if they scored 100? I wouldn't really yeah, be that surprised. Yeah, team total, I like that. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean Arizona just laying the big number. I mean, you look at Wright State's effective field goal percentage, 231st in the nation that game was pretty bad uh yeah I, I i think arizona this to me i mean we already had the 116 that was a bit of a scare i think we're due for just a super boring blowout so i'll take arizona laying the big number oh we have something to and say. how did we not talk about that georgia state i told you i told you man <laughs> i called that perfectly i said they almost didn't cover but i said that i said watch this will be a closer game than what you think and then late gonzaga will make a run and georgia state will still cover all right. I mean, oh. we're, we're next to the Boom. Oracle right here. <laughs> Boom. All right. All right. That's it for Friday. And for that, I'm on Wright State. Really? Wright State. Tanner Holden, baby. Plus 20 and a half. Let's roll. I'll see you. <laughs> uh, and friendly reminder for Friday, uh, get your first half unders in. And, of course, Colgate, Yale, and Chattanooga. That's going to get you somewhere in the vicinity of 140 to 1 on the money line for the parlay. Saturday, I don't have exact times yet. I didn't look that hard, but the second, the first game of the day will be New Mexico State taking on the winner of Vermont or Arkansas. Obviously can't pick that yet. So we'll move to the second game of the day, North Carolina taking on Baylor. Baylor five point favorites, minus 210 on the money line. North Carolina plus 170, 148 and a half is the total. This instant reaction to the spread is that they're reacting to North Carolina just absolutely <laughs> laying into a team that they had a pretty ridiculous rebounding edge on. Yeah, so no, and for me, it was it was less about and not to take any anything away from UNC's victory. They played really well. Marquette was never in that game, but to me, that was just more about Marquette not belonging. 
Uh, you know, Scott keeps bringing it up like Shaka Smart in the tourney. He's just garbage. He's done. We got to move on. I, I obviously you're right with how bad uh, Marquette <laughs> looked, but I don't know if this. I, I just don't know if what UNC did against Marquette is sustainable against this Baylor team. I know Baylor's a little banged up, but I, I'm still taking Baylor minus five just because I, I feel like they're. I feel like if UNC, even if they won and covered against Marquette, if it wasn't by that sort of margin, this spread would have been like seven, seven and a half. So I, I feel like it's a hair short. I'll go Baylor. Scott, what are you doing? So I feel like the line is definitely reflective of North Carolina's performance today, but also. The fact that Baylor, of course, lost one of their best big men during the course of the season. And they're a bit concerned that North Carolina might kill them on the glass. And I do think that that's definitely a possibility in this game. However, I root for North Carolina, so let me just get that out in the air. But the last time I saw them dominate a team, it was Virginia in the ACC tournament. And then Virginia Tech smacked the crap out of them the next day. So I have yet to see consistent, I'd say, performances from North Carolina this overall season. Plus, Caleb Love shot the lights out in the first half. He's pretty streaky as a whole. For me, I'm going to go with Baylor as well. I think they just have another gear defensively. And I do think that unlike Marquette, they might be act- they might be able to actually, I don't know, contest some three-pointers every now and then. Yeah. So I do think Baylor should do Close enough to get the, on the line. Uh, Baylor, yeah, they defend the, the line well. Colby? Baylor, Baylor all day. Even if Cryer, I mean, Cryer, it seems like Cryer's not going to play, but uh, it doesn't matter. They, they find a way. Scott Drew's... I think probably the best coach going right now. Sean, your free throw theory yes. is a, is in application here. Yeah, because uh, uh, Baylor is way better than UNC, right? No. Oh, other way around? Yeah. I didn't five, realize five, Baylor was that bad. Five-point dog. Mm. Massive discrepancy between the free throw shooting. Uh, really, though, the, the what the offense, though, is, is the concern for Baylor. They're the 29th offense. North Carolina charts at 202nd. Ryan, you're you're right. It is sixty. I mean, I, I I don't know if I can take it. It goes against my own system. I'm gonna have to change it to UNC plus wow. five. I hate it though. I'm just, not gonna lock this up. Just a reminder, by the way, it's also in Texas. It's gonna be in Fort Worth. Yeah. I don't know if that's gonna factor right, into your decision, you know but I'm throwing <laughs> I'm throwing it out there. Throw out my system. It's easy I'm to see a tide with, turn. I'm going against my own system. It's a All win-win. Right. We're, either let's... either I either I I'm right for fading my own system, or the system humbles me and teaches me a lesson. Kramer, what was your play? Did you Baylor, get it? Baylor, 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 Baylor Bears? Although, boy, this the shaky East region. It's looking ripe for a turkey to come out. <laughs> a war turkey, Sean. Eleven, the 11 seed, Michigan, taking on Tennessee. Tennessee minus five and a half, minus 240 on the money line. Michigan plus 200. 137 is the total. Oh, man. All right, so now we're entering. This is like the Rick Barnes. Past the first round of the tournament is like getting into the water where you know there's a shark. Danger. You know Danger. there's a shark. Now, the chances of the shark biting you are probably decent, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. I, I don't know. I, I may, I'm going to let – maybe Colby goes first on this one. Colby, what do you got? I'm going to go Tennessee with the, with the status up in the air on Devontae Jones, uh, the, the Coastal Carolina transfer. That is their starting point guard. Uh, you know, Colorado State kind of let him off the hook, I thought, today. I think Tennessee rolls here. Fade Rick Barnes will be on later. He can get to the Sweet 16, all right? But uh, I think Tennessee rolls. I'll lay the five and a half with the Vols. You know what? I'm going to go, uh, and, I, and I didn't like them. Obviously, I had Colorado State, but I think I learned a lesson. I'm going to go Michigan uh, plus five and a half. To Colby's point, there always is one of these teams with a lot of potential, a lot of pedigree, early preseason hype that has no business being in the tournament, a la Michigan, and that ends up going on a bit of a run here. Maybe they are <laughs> this year's Syracuse. I think what I saw out of that team in the second half, I think they had that wake up call early against Colorado state. And I think they kind of gelled. Uh, this is just an eye test for me. Obviously Tennessee looked great, but I'm, I'm going to take Michigan in the points. Kramer. Uh, I'm going to lay the point. I mean, again, I, I'm, I don't really want to be super chalky, but I, I do feel like been coming out here many, many moons now. Yes. And uh, it does seem like the weekend is where you, you want to get a little bit more chalky. I, I, I'm i fading the Big Ten. So one Big Ten leak through so far. We're going to fade them here. Let's take ten. Tennessee is so damn good. Right. It's just the coach. We have an update. Arkansas, University of Vermont, cash it for the first half under oh, let me get that. 61. We picked it at uh, 65. So 
And, uh, yeah, we got some more action coming up as well. San Francisco, Murray, and uh, Akron, UCLA right now. Akron up six on UCLA. Somebody somebody locked that. <laughs> somebody bet that. Uh, uh, Scott, what's your, what's your thoughts on this game? So you already mentioned Rick Barnes being a historical choke artist in the tournament, but – in my opinion, even though Tennessee is a three seed, I think they're a top four team in the country. I think, wow. they're, I, I think they're actually that talented. They're that good. But I'm going with Tennessee. Michigan, even though I made money on them today, shout out to the Wolverines, the issue was the guard play. And Collins was great uh, after a shaky start, and, but he was a freshman. They kind of relied on a bunch of random guys to fill the void. I really didn't think Michigan that looked that good. And if you look at the rest of the actual uh, Mountain West today, Boise didn't look good. San Diego State looked okay. Michigan trailed by 15, and they couldn't guard the three-point line. And if Tennessee is able to hit threes, which they definitely are capable of, that was definitely a concern. And Tennessee actually has some size that can at least limit Dickinson, and I do think that'll be enough. I'm going to take the volunteers. All right. Uh, we got a couple more games left. Want to shout out StableDuel.com. Was watching uh, not only the games, but watching Kramer uh, and some of the other uh, Bowser, Scott Bowser, even our buddy uh, Dick Olson being hardcore degenerates, getting down on the horses while sweating out four games of March Madness. If you're a true D-Gen only, you, you got to be uh, setting up that Stable Duel account. They have free games. They have paid games. Uh, you can mess around and win a ton of money. $25,000. You can win up to twenty five grand off of one entry over at StableDuel.com. Very fun to get your stable up and running. I mean, the sweat is real uh, over at StableDuel.com. Download now at StableDuel.com. See how many winners you can pick in your stable. I'll see you in the winner's circle. Play, race, win. I don't fuck it up, and you fuck it up. It's, it's oh, just, well, I, I hit it's not my, meant to be. I hit my microphone while it's, I was uh, tossing to the camera. It's just not meant to be. All right. The next game on the docket would be St. Mary's versus the winner of UCLA and Akron. We can't pick that game, obviously. Zip so it up. Let's let's move on to Richmond. Providence, a couple teams Dog. filled with dogs. This one is being played in Buffalo, New York, Sean. Remember that. Providence, again, two and a half point favorite, minus 140 on the money line. Richmond, plus 120. 133 is the total. Colby. Tell me why you're going to find a way to pick against Ed Cooley again. <laughs> I, I, I have a ton of reasons why. Uh, well, Colby was so mad about uh, the, South Dakota State. That was the maddest I've seen the day to face in a long it was, time. It was it as mad as he was. It just didn't make any sense. Like, their game is not to play at half court, and they elected to do that, I thought, more often than not, and th that's why they went home. But shout out to Providence for getting it done. Unfortunately, I think they run into a team wow. that, that, to me, screams – Potential, like, potential. You, we, you know, we were looking for that tw that double digit seed that could go far. Rich, Sean. Richmond starts yeah, they five, look good. They look good. five fifth year seniors. Yeah. Jacob Gilliard is going to be on. You know, whether it's I, I would imagine it's going to be Bynum. Um, as I thought I kind of like the matchups here. I, I'm going to take the Spiders. I'm going to take the Spiders to get it done. Sean, the way that he said uh, Ed Cooley did a good job was like an old ex-girlfriend that lost a lot of weight. <laughs> she looks good. She's looking good. I mean, she's doing all right. But did, like, honestly, I didn't come away from today thinking that was super impressive by Providence. And that's why you got to <laughs> hang Providence one more time. They don't win in an impressive fashion. <laughs> they just they win. win games that they probably shouldn't win at times. They get a lot of uh, all their... All that regression luck, that all happened in the Big East tournament in their final game. Now it's back to just the Providence getting all the bounces. Again, Richmond coming off a, you know, again, 10 and a half point uh, outright win. I like fading them here. They looked great. But I think that was, again, I think you that know to they me, had to run through their entire conference tournament. And then as a double digit dog, they win the first game. There's something special happening in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, I, Buy some of that water down there. I think, I think you're right. They ran through the conference tournament and they beat Iowa as a 10 and a half point dog. Get the Gatorade. Let's dump it out. They've won their Super Bowl. Providence to me is just getting started. Lastly, Richmond on the offensive boards, 328th in the nation. I, I, I think Providence can out physical them on the offensive glass. And uh, I, I think they two and a half. It's uh yeah, love me some Providence. Kramer? 
Uh, let Scott go because everyone knows where I'm Scott, going. what are you what are you doing here? Well, I was going to ask for these picks. Does it have to be a side or can it be a total? You can do whatever you want, Scott. We're in you're Vegas. Go, you're going right. You do whatever. We're like, not. We're not. I'm here leprechaun. Okay. Just saying. I like. I like the under. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel like you're looking at a situation where both of these teams played high up octane offenses. Of course, Providence played South Dakota State, and you ended up having Richmond beat Iowa. And yet both those games were really played at a snail's pace. And Providence and Richmond did a great job of controlling or limiting the fast break opportunities. And the fact that both these teams really love to play slow, just to search up the actual pace numbers here, Providence ranks 276th in pace according to Ken Palm. And Richmond ends up ranking 191, which is, you know, still below average. I do think you'll see this game really, really slow. I expect Providence to try to control the pace. I think you'll see this game end somewhere in the mid to high 120s. I see this game potentially first to 60 wins, but I like the under. If you had to take one. If I had to pick one, uh, I really love this Providence team. Yeah, I mean, give me Rich, Ed Cooley. See, Cooley, that's my thing is Cooley. I love Providence. So if I go against them and they win, I'm in a great situation. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> Benedict. This- Benedict Colby. Benedict Connery. We, we need to get him like a, a communism hat to wear for, for his uh, his turn coding. <laughs> one of those one of those like red berets. Or maybe just uh, was it Aaron Burr? Was he the turn coat? No, anyway. <laughs> one uh one little nugget while we're uh, talking totals. Shout out to Moonoff. Moonoff shot me a text. Keep an eye on those unders in the Midwest region, aka uh, upstate uh, Buffalo, New York. Both games. This was earlier on in the day at like two thirty. Both games. Went under the total by uh, 21 <laughs> and 25, and first half way under. Those rims are really tight. So, uh, just a little nugget there if you're if you're a totals person. Hashtag I'm not a totals guy, but uh, something to keep an eye on as Scott gives out an under in that Buffalo uh, games being played in Buffalo. Yeah, and if you were wondering what uh, Moonoff does with his time now that he's not writing the ref report, he's he's uh, doing <laughs> he's doing rim, the rim report. I rim, like it. Rim analysis. We call it, it's a rim job. Someone's got to do it. Yeah, it's, a, it's tough. It's dirty. St. Peter's the 15 seed. They, Wait, Kramer. Oh, you just you your analysis was just let's go Providence, right? I I have I have them in the national championship game, yeah. Sean. <laughs> They're winning this game. It's minus two and a half. Like, what's the handicap? I like this Richmond team. I'm a Spiders fan, but yep. the Friars, there's something special about Ed Cooley. There's something special about these people outside looking at us like Happy we're St. fish. Patrick's Day, and guys. there's something <laughs> special about this team. As Ed Cooley said, it's the most locked in unit he has ever coached. Let's keep riding that train. All right. St. Peter's, the 15 seed hailing from the great state of New Jersey. They'll be taking on Murray state or the Dons of San Francisco. We don't have a number yet. Obviously. Moving on to Memphis, the nine seed. Gonzaga, the one seed. The Zags laying 11 minus 720 on the money line, plus 500 for Memphis. 154 is the total. Colby, tell oh, us yeah. how dangerous this Memphis team Look, is. I, 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 can we get Billis back on the show? I want to just talk about the Georgia <laughs> State game for a bit because I think Memphis is a much better version of Georgia State. And you saw it. What was Georgia State? Georgia State's not a great offensive team. Like, they, they, they're just athletic. And they, they gave Drew Timmy some problems. They gave, I mean, I know he, had a, he stepped it up in the second half. But Memphis is going to be able to do that. And I, I'm all over Memphis plus 11 points here. And I say sprinkle some on the money line. Yes. I mean, look, Memphis has a, some of the most talented players going. Like, okay, I, I get it. You got, you got Holmgren, all right? Mike Holmgren's son, Sean. Uh, I, <laughs> a completely different figure. It's weird. It's not <laughs> same build, <laughs> but, strangely uh, different neck. It's uh, it's odd. But uh, but look, I mean, the Memphis has a team full of players. I think Didn't they get the whole and they have the appetite. depth. They have the depth, like you saw today. Georgia State's bigs ran into foul trouble. They didn't have the depth. We we saw them go deep into that yeah. bench. Well, guess who does have the depth? Memphis, and, and they've had three straight great recruiting classes, and their their bigs can make a difference. Fifth in the nation, Memphis is in offensive rebounding, not great in a free throw percentage, but not Gonzaga is not uh, as high as you would expect. Only seventy one point nine for the Zags. Eleven points to me is way too much to give to this Memphis team, and I I thought they were composed. Uh, you know. Almost gave the way uh, the lead there a couple times, brought it back. They felt like they controlled a, a decent, not an amazing Boise State team. I'm worried that maybe you know, 
Gonzaga sweating it out with Georgia State. That was a wake up call, maybe that the Zags needed, and they're gonna they're gonna you know just run it up on Memphis. But I'm with you. I'm gonna go Memphis plus eleven. I am a little worried that that Georgia State game was a wake up call. Just I, I just feel like it's a dangerous matchup. I, I said this you know, before we even saw the seeding. I said some one seed is going to get Memphis in the second round, and you can actually make the argument <laughs> that they're not the most talented team. That's what I was, that's what I was saying weeks ago, right? Uh, meaning the one seed in that matchup. And you look, and, and they got bigs that can do this. Jalen Duran, that guy's a baller. Dog. This is going to be a big t- – I'm telling you, I think it's going to be a, a, a closer game than people think. Uh, Memphis all day, and I, I think sprinkle some on the money line. Scott. For me, Gonzaga's a team that I don't want to say I figured out earlier this year, but I'm really not a fan of the guards. I just going through it. Of course, Timmy and Holmgren put up great numbers. Uh, Timmy had 32 and 13. Holmgren had a, a, an insane stat line here. Holmgren had 19, 17, and seven blocks, which is just ridiculous. That is insane. But either way, I'm sure his dad got it on the camcorder. But <laughs> I still think that Memphis is going to keep this game close. Gonzaga's guards, I do think, are a bit inconsistent. And you're looking at a situation where Gonzaga – really blew the game open once every one of Georgia State's big men yeah. fouled out of the game. So Georgia State hung around, they played tough, and Memphis is definitely a solid defensive team that could create some matchup problems and hang around. Do I think they're going to win the game? No. I think Gonzaga's going to pull it out, but 11 does seem like a few too many. I think they win by eight. Love it. Exact score prediction. Kramer, what do you got? You've been looking for that eight and a half point dog. Sure. Yes. Uh, I haven't found it yet. Again, lockstep with you guys. Uh, I think, I think Gonzaga got to the point where they were playing walk-ons or close to walk-ons <laughs> and they no, were no, just no. Georgia state. You mean, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Gonzaga was playing against okay. the walk-ons gotcha. of Georgia state and they were able to bully him. And it was, it was silly basketball. It looked like Sean trying to guard a, uh, someone way larger than him in the rec league. How just, dare you? Uh, the elbow was going to work and, and, and he was going to get to the I basket every feet. time. S- seven guys on Memphis. Yeah, no. I, seven are, are six, well, I, six, eight or taller. The way that Gonzaga played also, they know they noticeably looked uh, irritated at times dealing with or being frustrated by physical play. So I, I mean, you know, to the, to Sean's point earlier about a team that kind of maybe was a little high, highly ranked and had some potential and has completely shit the bed all year. And maybe they're figuring it out as an 11 point dog. I mean, there's going to be a little dog. sprinkle. We'll be talking about that later, I guess. But yeah, Memphis plus 11. I'm with you guys. Wow. Last a little nervous. Last game of the day will be Creighton taking on the winner of Kansas, Texas Southern, which I believe uh, just recently tipped off. Welcome to Jurassic Park. So we can't pick that one. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a limb and say Kansas. Okay. But Can- Kansas has got to be looking their chops. Scott, what do you think the line would be? Kansas, uh, Creighton. It's a really tough call with the injuries for that Creighton's dealing oh. with. I got to say, if Gonzaga's laying 11 against Memphis, Kansas might be laying, it might be a hot take here, but 12. I, I think you're probably right. I mean, with, with I look like Cockbrenner might have had a serious uh, injury. I think he's done for the year. And then you have Nebhardt, who's out for the year. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's, if you're a Creighton fan, that really sucks. That would probably be a decent game if you had both healthy. Bill uh, Self will, might not. Bill Self has a chance to to cruise to the round of thirty two. Donald, the uh, lie in the uh, YouTube chat saying, "Isn't UAB an eight and a half point underdog against Houston?" It, I uh, I think when we picked it, they were eight. But if they've moved eight and a half over uh-oh. a win bet, I may have to add that Let's to my go. dog portfolio. We got people raising the roof out there. This is amazing. Ha- happy happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. I know I'm the <laughs> only one celebrating on the uh, show. Uh, Everyone else is anti. Well, I had to support the USFL. Well, I had my green shirt on earlier. You don't think war turkeys throw back a little whiskey, a little moonshine yeah. from well, time to time? This? What is this? What is this? It's a it's a Pellegrino it's filled with vodka. It's, it's a Perrier. Green. All right, and look, you French bastard. I have a I had my USFL wardrobe today. I had my Washington Federal shirt on before, so I just like to oh, switch wait. around. That is, it All was right? pretty great to see Colby change from one USFL T-shirt to another <laughs> USFL T-shirt. Hey, uh, April 16th, season kicks off. First down. I think the Perrier is part of his new Benedict uh, character, Sean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Benedict. You got to, like, put your uh, put your hand in the side pocket a la Napoleon. All right. Uh, Napoleon so Dant. How many locks are we doing? We, we I, I guess we can do six games because well, we picked two games from Friday. I was going to ask you guys, though. So I said I thought the Kansas line, assuming Kansas wins, of course, would be about 12 because of all the injuries that Creighton has. 
I think their center's done for the year. I mean, they that's, it, it, it certainly looked they like carried him off. Like it looked really bad, and he was screaming on the floor. And Nemhart, we know, is out for the year. Really soft. With the injuries to the point guard and the center, does twelve sound right to you guys? Because that's what I'm thinking. Yes, yes. But I'm curious. What Someone you guys threw think. out uh, go Bearcats throw out fourteen. I wouldn't be surprised if it's. It will uh, go up because everyone will read about the half. everyone will read about 13. the broken cock that uh, sorry cock Brenner <laughs> that uh, Creighton just I, I don't know if Michael Creighton wrote a book about a uh, a cock Brenner uh, maybe that's coming out in the future. Welcome to the cock Brenner. <laughs> All right, we got uh, two. Uh, how many locks? Let's do two locks right. and a dog, and the lock and dog segment is brought to you by PropSwap.com, where America goes to buy and sell real sports bets. Thinking about hedging, I mean, maybe you have, uh, I, I don't know what you could be sweating. Maybe you have, maybe you have Providence, <laughs> Final Four. Maybe you get a little nervous. You want to head over to PropSwap.com, list it over there before things uh, get really interesting. I mean, maybe you have St. Peter's winning it all. Perfect time to sell that St. Peter's ticket. If you have them going to the, the Final Four, uh, again, you can buy and sell real sports bets. Best part is you use our promo code SGP. You get an instant deposit match up to $500 dollar for dollar props up.com promo code S G P Scott. You're in the hot seat. We're going to actually start with you for the locks and dogs. Of course you can go, uh, you, for your dog, you can parlay something. Whatever you want, but two locks and a dog. Colby, just remember, if the juju gets messed up, it's Sean's oh, well, fault. All right, all right, no. All right, fine. We'll start with Ryan. Lock, Providence. <laughs> Damn it. Lock. That was going to be my lock. I'm your lock. Uh, no, Tom. we can cut. There's not only so many games. Lock number two, Notre Dame. Plus, oh, no, wait, sorry. Lock number two, Memphis, plus 11. And my dog, Notre Dame, wrong team favored on St. Patrick's Day. Say, give it to me one more time, Colby. I'm your leprechaun. That is so bad, and I, I'm not great Honestly, at impressions. Mild, mildly arousing. It might be, it might be bad in a good way, though. You know. Yes. Right. Thank so, you, Scott. So bad, it's good. There's gold in these hills. <laughs> All right. Is that what you say before you uh, have some lunch and an ass? All right. All right. People are checking us out, though. They're like, what's going on in there? They're talking about ass. Well, Are there a leprechaun out there? Sean Connery just signed a deal with Blue Wire? What's going on? He's doing college basketball handicapping? All right. Uh, oh, man, I like a lot of the same stuff uh, Kramer likes, unfortunately, here. That's all right. Let's do it. Together, bro. <laughs> Brothers finish together. Yep. I'm going to go on the limb here. Not really the limb. Everyone was on it, but I'm going to use it as my first lock. Baylor, minus five. Providence minus two and a half is the other lock. And then the dog. Give me Memphis mm. on the money line. Adios, Zags. Love a massive uh, plus 500 dog. Which I got a question there. Yep. Sean, you were originally going to take North Carolina. Yep. I told you the game was in Texas. Yes. And now Baylor's a lock of course. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, it's not. It's my best mind you don't is break a, my mind is a steel trap. Okay, I'm just asking. All right, cool. Making sure. No, you know. Sounds what? like fool's gold. <laughs> You know what, Scott? You're right. I'm going to go Notre Dame plus oh. four. I forgot. Oh. I forgot I had switched it because of the free throw thing. And then now that I remembered the free throw thing. And thanks, Sean, thanks you've got to hire show, Scott. Scott to just be in your ear during the show. <laughs> Scott just checks my work and actually listens. I thought to I me. could be persuasive, but I just completely <laughs> made you switch 10 points. You're like, oh, I'm going to go from <laughs> plus five to minus five. I'm he, like, can be really? your, yeah. he can be your mental coordinator. <laughs> I've been, Colby. I've been called worse. <laughs> what do you what do you got for your locks and uh your dog? Uh I will I will lock up Baylor minus five. I think they're gonna get it done. Um I I, I wanted to do the Rick Barnes thing, but he's burned me so many times over the past yeah. thirty years that I just can't do it. Um the other lock, I will go I'll I'll join you on this Notre Dame front. All right. And then the dog. I wanted to take Notre Dame as the dog, but that's not juicy enough, guys. I gave you New Mexico State today. Let's go with the Memphis Tigers and Penny Hardaway oh, yeah. and Larry Brown. Larry Brown, yeah. don't forget, he's a part of that staff this year. Legendary coach. He'll Love be the Larry difference. I, I saw him on the bench. Makes me trust him more. A little weekend at Bernie's vibe, mm -hmm. right? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Scott, now you're on the clock. Two locks and a dog. What are, you, what are you feeling? All right, so the first one, I will admit, I have yet to receive the full rim report, so I'm going to have to go based <laughs> on what you said before. But you said the two games in Buffalo already went under by 20-plus points. Yeah, Ooh. big unders. I'm taking the under yeah. uh, in the Providence-Richmond Rich, uh, game. 
you're looking at the situation I said before, which is that Iowa, great offense, up-tempo. They scored 63. South Dakota State was the second-leading scoring, uh, scoring team in the country. Scored 57 against Providence. These teams love to slow the pace. I expect to see just an absolute grind of a game here. I think 133 is too high. I expect, once again, this game to finish somewhere in the 120s. I'm going to take the under 133 in the Richmond-Providence game as the first lock. Second one, I'm going to take Memphis plus the 11. Gonzaga, I am really not impressed by the guards. And we can keep talking about how Memphis has the length, which I think is important to deal with the big men. Do you guys like Nemhard and all the guys Gonzaga has at the perimeter? No. Because I don't. They're no, soft. No, they're, traditionally I feel like they have a little bit better guard play. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, keep an eye out. Lester Quinones, Landers Nolly, Tyler Harris, Alex Lomax, Earl Timberlake, the Miami transfer. They are deep. They even have Penny Hardaway's son, Jaden Hardaway, deep on that bench. Memphis is going to be a problem. They're going to be a problem for them. Let's go. So I'm going to take them plus the points, and then my dog's going to be Notre Dame. Notre Dame on yeah. the money line, fighting Irish. I, ca- I can't lay four with an Alabama team that's lost no. three in a row. This team's a psycho <laughs> team. I mean, there's nothing much more to say. Notre Dame is, was real awful at the foul line against Rutgers. They would have won the game in regulation if they could make some free throws, but they're 75-plus percent in the regular season. I'm going Notre Dame. It seems like a coin toss game, so I'll easily take the money line at pretty nice plus money. Kramer, we have breaking news. We have breaking news. The first half owners have gone to nine, eight, and one. Let's go. Congratulations to the Akron Zips and the UCLA Bruins for hitting that first half under. And we got two two more to go today. Sixteen more chances to play tomorrow. Anything else to Well, and and for the week of heart, it is you know, if you got a if you got a soft stomach. Uh, the, the first half under ride is not for you. You have to be this tall to go on the first half mm. under ride. There's some ups, there's some downs, but we ride, we ride the entire ride. And there's gold at the end of the line. <laughs> all right, I'm not going to be able to top so, Colby, Sean Connery. So did we all, we're pretty much all on Notre Dame in some way. Huh? Yeah, either locking it or on the money line. What was Colby's uh, second line? There's gold at the end of the Oh, Colby, is there, yeah, no, let's go Notre Dame. Yeah. No, you had Notre Dame plus four. What was your other one? I, Memphis. I missed it. Oh. Memphis. You, you have Memphis yeah. money line, though, as your dog. I did. I did have what Memphis. Was your other so, lock? What's your, so what's your second Me- lock? Uh, what so do you mean? What? Oh, you're Memphis doubling up Memphis plus 11 is your lock, and then Memphis on the money line is your dog. No, no, no. I said my lock was Baylor and Notre Dame. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Baylor. And then, oh, Baylor. And, then, and then Memphis as right. the dog. Baylor was Point the one that was Point your finger missing. down there, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing nine things, and but, I've been drinking all day. But if you want, lock up Memphis plus 11, too. I'll see you at the finish line. Question, uh, by the way, can we uh, petition the NCAA to add more Mountain West teams to the tournament? Right, they oh, tend to make us a lot of money. It, it, they, well, are, they are helping out with some auto-fade action. All right, well, uh, thanks, uh, Scott, for hopping on here. Give Scott a follow at uh, Reichel Radio on Twitter. Check him out on the NBA Gambling Podcast, the PropCast, in our Slack channel, Dominating. Obviously, Colby, check him out, the college basketball experience. Still cranking out pods. Gold in them hills. <laughs> there is there is gold in those downloads as well. Uh, give us a follow at Gambling Podcast. Subscribe to the Twitter channel. That, or sorry, the YouTube channel. The the chat was off the chain today. Shout out to all the uh, all the uh, DJs watching live. We will be back for our final show at the Blue Wire Studios live from the Win in Las Vegas tomorrow, uh, approximately 5 p.m. Pacific. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Sean, say a prayer for my Hokies. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>